but I understand that that some people over this this animosity and this enmity and this aggression that they are showing over who killed this company, some people have been reconciled over it. Am I, am I seeing this correctly? That, that apparently now Flair and Bischoff and Russo and Jim Hurd, oh, Flair has uh, somehow apologized for his stern words on, on Twitter. Well, I don't think he apologized to Hurd. I think he thinks and hopes that Hurd is dead because Hurd's not on Twitter. That's not what he said on Twitter. But uh, did he did he actually put Hurd in that group? Well, apparently Ric Flair was bothered by the death of WCW show or death. Of, I called it the wrong name again. Who killed the killing of WCW? Who <laughs> killed, that's the killing of Sister George. Who killed WCW? And Ric Flair was not a participant. Of course, Dark Side famously did an episode that Ric Flair may not have appreciated. So he was not a part of this process. But while reacting differently in a sense he had a very similar response to you from episode one or from you to episode one well that's what i thought because that's what i'd seen was that he was not uh happy with these three people the unholy triumvirate jim hurd eric bischoff vince russo the three of them have the more blood on their hands that's where we're last i left off with flair Here's what was tweeted from the Ric Flair Twitter account. Again, it may not be him necessarily typing it out, but every first letter... Then in that case, caps. wouldn't someone turn the capital thing off if it wasn't him? Apparently that's his style, but let me read this. I've tried to lay low on this, but let's face it. Who killed WCW? It's a three-headed monster. Jim Hurd, Eric Bischoff, and Vince Russo. There's no individual wrestler or faction that caused anything to kill WCW. It was the people in charge that created dysfunction, animosity, and tried to divide and conquer by lying to everyone and involving themselves in the promotion, which was the ultimate failure. God, I could give you a thousand more examples. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's definitely dictating this to someone. I am one to live through all three nightmares and to be saved by WWE. Thank you to WWE for bringing, <laughs> for bringing someone who was dead in the water as a result of these three people back to life. So let's stop okay, there. Okay. Okay. Not only is that the way that he has felt and the way that he has spoken publicly, privately to me, publicly uh, uh, for the past 30 years and that is verifiably and demonstrably not only the way rick flair feels but it's also the fucking truth he did not he didn't tell any whoppers there he didn't stretch any truth he didn't make false accusations this is not what anything that many people aren't saying this was not inflammatory in terms of is he lying or is he working or is he what no it, that's kind of what happened, and that's pretty much what he said has been happening for 30 fucking years. So I have no problem with that tweet whatsoever. It is interesting that two of the people that were involved in the early days both had the same exact thought, which was, even though it didn't completely die, you have to blame Jim Hurd. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that was the start of it. That was, you know, Vince had an eight-year fucking unobstructed run at doing whatever he wanted to do to the wrestling business because of Jim Hurd. Well, apparently Vince Russo did not take too kindly to what. Wait, right, right, hold on, say. hold on. I want to be, I want to be clear here. I'm not saying Hurd was there for eight years. I'm saying Hurd's what three year tenure put WCW in the hole for their first eight years. Go ahead. We have something here. Vince Russo, who didn't like what Ric Flair had to say, tweeted out, "Looks like the Nature Boy is hitting the rum candy again." Thanks for giving me that much credit. Rum candy? Thanks for giving me that much wait, credit. Wait a minute, back up. Let's not bury the lead. What famous Ric Flair story of public intoxication involves rum candy? Well, there was that, there was that night in the cornfield with Ray Candy. Oh, that's the one. Yeah. Thanks for giving me that much credit for a writer to take down a multi-million dollar company through words on a page words on a page bro i guess i really was special 
Not my fault you weren't in the dock, Rick. R-I-C-K. Sorry, man. I hope you don't think my excessive use of your son David and the rest of your family, for that matter, oh, who were great, Lord. by the way, <laughs> wasn't the knife that drew the company's last blood. Yeah, I failed at laying low, too. Yeah, he, he put David Flair in the ring before he'd ever had a goddamn wrestling lesson. And then, after they'd done that, and made him look like an idiot in front of the entire world, then fucking... <laughs> Vince signed him and sent him to OVW to train, to start training. Hey, yeah, yeah. Well, this and again, you see, use, this you, is the way he talks also, by the way, just so you know. Using someone and using someone well are two different things. Saying that, like, I used your family is one thing. Like you said, David Flair was used in certain ways that didn't make much sense. Ric Flair had his head shaved and was put in a mental hospital. Yes. So that's not good yeah. booking, and that wasn't anything any Ric Flair fan ever wanted to see. It was a flim flam of the Flair fans, is what it was. Ric Flair responded to Vince Russo on Twitter. Wow, glad you got back to me, Vince Russo. Whatever candy I'm eating, at least I can afford to eat, which I'm not sure you can. <laughs> I would give you $20. My shoes cost more than your house, brother. I would give you $20. Or excuse me, $20,000, not $20. <laughs> I would give you $20,000. Eric Bischoff, $20,000, and Jim Hurd, $20,000 a piece wired in advance to show, <laughs> yeah. to show up in Tampa or Atlanta. I'll rent the venue in Tampa or Atlanta. It will sell out for sure so we can hash this out. I guarantee that I could probably sell this to a pay-per-view status because I'm Ric Flair and you're not. Yeah, bitch. Story of my life. He turned it into a sales pitch. What is that? Well, besides that, okay, Heard, he's 90-whatever years old. Hopefully, he's hooked up to some kind of really strong machines. They probably couldn't transport him down there, medevac him or whatever. But I know, you know Bischoff's interested in 20 grand with his financial history, and Russo's begging for spare change on the corner, practically, so... He, of course, he wouldn't take my offer of five grand if I had a baseball bat and he just had to come pick it up. He wouldn't take that. See, I'd have been in cash. He wouldn't have to pay federal income tax or anything. But nevertheless... Um, but it all ends with basically... I'm liking the way Flair's talking so far, though. And now I think he's full of shit. It's just a huckster trying to set up a pay-per-view with another bunch of hucksters. <laughs> well, That's what it sounds like. But then I hate your guts. Let's talk about it, and we can both make some money. Come on, but, how you doing? Hey, well, buddy. yeah, but then, then how come the worm turned and the mood changed all of a sudden? From what I understand, well, Ric Flair on a Wednesday morning issued uh, this Twitter, uh, this Twitter tweet. This he Twitter issued, tweet. He issued this tweet. A very important person in my life reminded me yesterday that Twitter is the weakest form of communication. I want to take this opportunity to apologize to Jim Hurd, Eric Bischoff, and Vince Russo, because I really don't know. I unfairly judged you without knowing the inner workings and behind the scenes of the business. Wait a minute. He was in the inner workings with Hurd. I was standing there watching him in, in Hurd's inner workings. On the corporate end with people you had to report to and work with. In the office. They were talking to him. Both of them. I wish on a personal note that all three of us could have worked together and had better relationships. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck happened? What the fuck is this? Uh, well, it, it goes on to blow them a little bit more here and then to say that, uh, remind everyone that The Rock's company picked up the option to make a biography of Ric Flair, which they're working on, but a very important person in my life. Who is that fucking spoil sport? And, and where is the real Ric Flair and what have you done with him? Because that's both. I want to apologize. I would like to work for all of you gentlemen. I'd like to work for all of you or work with all of you gentlemen or whatever. The baby wants to work with The Rock. Who threatened to pull what financial rug out from under him that he all of a sudden changed course on I this? Do, God damn, I would, have, I would have almost fucking paid him the same thing back just not to fucking get the limber tail on these three fucking cretins that he accused of... And rightfully so, wrestling malfeasance. You see, the good thing about Heard is Russo 
There's never been in a fight, but he's also younger than Flair considerably. Bischoff looks a little older, but he's still younger, and he looks probably younger than he really is. Hurd is old. Flair is old. I don't think anyone would have a problem with those two going at it. But did now did you did you ever see Bischoff try to work though? Well, yeah, in 1998 or 90, oh god, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, no, you'd have to be a goddamn paraplegic not to be able to take him. And I mean, I guess he did the karate exhibitions and stuff, but every time he tried to work, he's a black belt in ninja Star Wars. Well, there you go. And that was Velcro. No, I think anybody could fucking whip Eric. He just had people buffaloed because he had a Japanese friend and a fucking gi. Anyway, so what? what's... Ha I'm disappointed in Rick for that last one. You know, maybe it was somebody else. Maybe he got hacked. Maybe he got hacked on the last one because I know the first two were the way he actually fucking feels. Who encouraged him to apologize to Jim Hurd? Like, I, Ru he, Russo he, and Bischoff are still active in the world of wrestling by doing different things. Jim Hurd is completely out there, or out well, of there, I should say. Did he have to just feel like he had to include, or maybe somebody wrote it for him and had to include and doesn't know who Jim Hurd is? Or hopefully somebody's not trying to lead Rick to Jesus or anything, where he's forgiving all of people of their sins. Oh, here's another tweet he just put out. A very important person in my life reminded me yesterday that Twitter is the weakest form of communication. I want to take this opportunity to apologize to that poor stewardess that I chased around with my penis hey! on the plane ride from hell. Oh, come Woo! On. Look at this helicopter, baby! Woo! For heaven's sake, next thing he'll be apologizing on Twitter to the Egyptian. All in caps. I want Holy to apologize cap. to the Egyptian for, <laughs> for that thousand dollar tip I gave that woman for calling you an asshole. And I didn't mean to woo at the old blind grandmother. I apologize to the other guy for the bathroom incident. But let's not talk about that. Woo! Wait a minute, poop deck pappy. Remember, we're... <laughs> All well, right. You've gotten before... that name on this show in like five <laughs> different segments so far. Hey, I am pushing, and next is going to be olive oil. And I'm starting to get hungry. So what's happening in the world of the... Arcadian Vanguard Network this week. Another fine week of programs. Please go through all the shows, check them out, and subscribe. Of course, they're on Twitter at Super Podcasts or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Arcadian Vanguard. The Wrestling News. Each and every day, get your wrestling news and get it for free from the Wrestling News with our morning wrestling newscast directly from thewrestlingnews.com or wherever you find your favorite podcast, Arcadian Vanguard's The Wrestling News. Want to remind everyone to go through the archives, shut up and wrestle with Brian Solomon, and of course, stick to wrestling with John McAdam. Scott Cornish has been on both shows, great appearances, new episodes of both shows up right now, and of course, the 605 Super Podcast, The Mothership! Stay tuned, because there is some stuff working, or working, there's stuff we are working on right now, Scott Cornish-themed special programming. Stay tuned, we're really excited to bring everyone this. Go through the archive, 605pod.com, The Mothership. Stay tuned. There's something growing, and we may have to get some kind of disinfectant. Ooh, you want me to tickle you again? Woo, woo.